Well, I was just pulling out the uh, mower to do a video and uh, opened the hood, and this is what I found in the engine. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's been packing stuff in there, but uh, that's going to need to come out. I'm really hoping I don't find something alive in here. Hello, welcome to the channel. Now, uh, about a year ago, I published a five-year review of this Husqvarna garden tractor back behind me here. And uh, that video got a lot of views and a lot of comments. So uh, today I thought I would do a follow-up to that video and I'll give an update on the tractor and I'll clear up some misconceptions and uh, I'll also provide some of my opinions on uh, buying a new tractor. I've had the tractor for about five years now and I've put 150 hours on it. Now in the last video, I talked about some issues that I had to fix. For example, the uh, headlights, a year later, they're still working great. Also, the ignition switch. <laughs> Haven't had any other issues with that either. And the electronic locking differential. is still engaging. And disengaging as it should. Now, when the engine gets hot, these uh, gauges here, they still fog up and I've pretty much given up on fixing these. Everything else is working just as it should. The uh, Briggs & Stratton engine always starts instantly. It runs smoothly, has uh, tons of power, and it doesn't burn any oil. The uh, transmission operates nice and smoothly, and uh, this mower deck here, it's basically bomb-proof. Now, uh, the only issue I've had in the last year was a broken drive belt, and uh, that wasn't because of any quality issue. I just happened to uh, hit a tree root with the uh, mower deck here going at almost full speed, and the uh, sudden change in velocity snapped the belt. Okay, so let me address some of the comments. A few people wrote that they thought I was being uh, too negative when I did the original review of this mower, but the truth is I don't overall have a negative view of this mower at all. You know, I was just trying to provide a uh, honest review, and when you're providing an honest review, you have to talk about both the positive aspects and the negative aspects of a product as you experience them. And you know, that's one advantage I have on this channel is I don't have any sponsors, and so I don't have to uh, just talk about the uh, good things about a product. I can talk about my experiences, both good and bad. And uh, to be fair, I did talk about a lot of the uh, really good features that this mower has. Now some of the comments were with regards to selecting a new mower or who makes the best mower. Uh, but uh, honestly, the uh, best mower really depends on the attributes that are most important to you. So uh, what I thought I'd do is I would tell the uh, story of how I ended up selecting this Husqvarna and uh, talk a little bit about my experiences with both John Deere and Husqvarna over the last 10 years. So about 10 years ago, I needed a new lawn tractor for this property, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I just bought a house. Now, it seemed that in the uh, entry-level lawn tractor segment that uh, John Deere was offering the uh, best feature set at the highest quality. So I went and bought the uh, cheapest John Deere lawn tractor they made. At that time, it was the uh, D105 model, and it had a 42-inch mower deck. I owned that tractor for five years, same as I've had this one, and uh, that tractor saw a lot of really hard use, and I only had one issue with that tractor the whole time. Once the uh, drive belt got worn in, it started to slip off the pulley when I would shift from uh, drive to reverse. So I took it to the dealer, and they said that it appeared that uh, the retention bracket that was supposed to hold that pulley in place was uh, never installed from the factory, and so once the uh, drive belt uh, started to get loose, it would come off. Now uh, that was fixed under warranty and I got the tractor back in a few days and I never had another issue with that tractor. And while that tractor was very reliable, it was not durable. It had a, a smaller single cylinder consumer grade engine. It had a, a CVT transmission with a plastic or fiberglass case. And I started thinking if I was going to continue to use it as I had been, I was going to end up breaking something expensive and that I really should upgrade to something designed for heavier use. So uh, I also wanted to uh, upgrade that 42 inch mower deck to a 52 or 54 inch deck to speed up my mowing times. So I started looking at uh, garden tractors which are uh, beefier and designed for heavier use from uh, Husqvarna, John Deere, and Cub Cadet. 
Now I eliminated Cub Cadet right off the bat because uh, they had some design elements I just didn't like and uh, they were also using a brand new untested engine and it was just a little bit too much risk for me. So I was comparing John Deere to Husqvarna and uh, this particular model had a, a larger commercial grade engine. It had a uh, beefier transmission with electronic differential and even had a, a bigger, more durable mower deck. This one has a 52 inch mower deck versus 48 on the uh, equivalent John Deere. And it was also several hundred dollars cheaper. So all in all, this Husqvarna garden tractor was a better value because I was primarily looking for durability and a larger mower deck. So in my opinion, in the entry level segment, the John Deere offered the uh, better buy, whereas in the uh, garden tractor segment, the Husqvarna was a better purchase based on the factors that were most important to me. Now another thing to consider is if you buy a John Deere, even from a big box store, the local dealer will actually assemble and check out the mower before it gets delivered to the store. When I received my John Deere, the uh, mower deck was level, everything was set up properly, and the uh, mower was uh, ready to go right when I received it. On the other hand, when I picked up my Husqvarna, it was assembled by the uh, local staff at my Lowe's store who are not necessarily mower experts. The uh, deck wasn't set to the proper level. It was uh, definitely not leveled out, and I was missing a couple of washers on the uh, seat mount here. Now, uh, what I found is the uh, John Deere had a few more features that uh, I thought were well thought out, and uh, they just seemed to have a little bit more focus on uh, quality. So those are my experiences with John Deere and Husqvarna, just based on the last two mowers that I've owned. Now, uh, while this garden tractor did have a few issues that I talked about in my last video, overall, I've been really happy with it. You know, those issues were spread out over a five-year time period. This mower just gets the job done. It uh, seems like it's going to last for a very long time, and it wasn't too expensive. Now, uh, if this one's right for you or not, it really depends on the attributes that are most important to you. So uh, that's about all I have for this video, and uh, we'll see you next time.